Hi boys and girls, this is Mrs. Drake and I'll be talking to you in this lesson about cubic functions. A cubic function is a nonlinear function of the third degree, so that means it's not a line and the degree has to do with the exponent on the x. That means that the highest exponent on the x is the number 3. Your standard form is y equals ax cubed or ax to the third power plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Your parent function, that means the most basic cubic function that you can graph, is y equals x to the third power. The main thing that you're looking for is this 3 as an exponent on the x. Okay, so the first thing we're going to graph is y equals x to the third power. So you can do that on a graphing calculator or at desmos.com. So I'll show you at desmos.com. You're going to go to that website, go to start graphing. And then in here you're going to write y equals x. And then to get the exponent you're going to do shift 6 the third power. Okay, you have your graph here. I like to play around with the zoom. I like each of my little lines to represent one unit, so I usually zoom out until I get that. And then to get the points that you would graph, you're going to click on this, and then click on the table, and you'll have points. If you need to find more points than the ones they give you for some reason, you can scroll down, and then you have to type in the next numbers that you want. Okay, so here's a copy of that table from the website. And what you would do is plot all five points and connect them with a smooth curve. Okay, some important features that we're going to look at about a cubic function. Here's that same parent function that I just graphed. Okay, the y-intercept is not a new vocabulary word for you. That's where the graph intersects the y-axis. Okay, so this graph, the parent function, crosses here at the origin at 0, 0. I just want the y value, so I say that y equals 0 because it crosses at 0, 0. The most important one we're going to be talking about are the zeros of the graph. This is where the graph crosses the x-axis. Hopefully you remember the term zeros from when we did the quadratic unit, right? They could also be called roots, x-intercepts, or solutions. Okay, for a cubic function, there could be either one, two, or three zeros, depending on how many times the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, so let's find the zeros of this parent function. Right, there should only be one of them. It's right here at the origin, so it crosses at the point 0, 0, and I just want the x value, which is 0. So there's one 0, and it's x equals 0. Okay, here's another example of a cubic function. Let's try to find the y-intercept. Where does this graph intersect the y-axis? Okay, you should go up and down your y-axis until you find where it crosses. You should look at this point right here, which is at the, the 2. So it's at 0, 2. I just want the y value. So it's y equals 2. Okay, let's take a look for the zeros. Remember, those are the roots, the x-intercepts, or the solutions. And they could, there could be 1, 2, or 3 of them. Okay, so take a look at your x-axis. And you should see that I crossed here at the negative 1 and here at the 2. So there are two zeros. There are x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. Okay, if you have more than one solution, you could write them in set notation. That's when you write them inside braces. It would look like this, brace, negative 1, comma 2, and then another brace. Here's a third example of a cubic function. Notice that has that exponent of 3 again. Okay, what is the y-intercept of this graph? Okay, take a look at your y-axis, and your eyes should go to this point at the negative 2. It's at 0, negative 2. So y equals negative 2. Okay, let's find the zeros of this graph. Remember, there could be one, two, or three of them. So look across your x-axis, and I see it crosses in one, two, three places for this one. So let's name those values. It crosses at x equals negative 2, at x equals negative 1, and at x equals 1. So there are three of them, x equals negative 2, x equals negative 1, and x equals 1. And again, I could write that in set notation with my braces. Now, I know that there were three zeros. It's the same graph as you saw on the previous slide. We could also find those zeros on the table if you didn't want to get them from the graph. So this we would use more in the classroom when we were using the, the other calculators where you didn't have that nice graph where you can hold the mouse over the point and it would tell you what the zeros were. Okay, so if you are looking on the table, this is the table from desmos.com. You're going to take a look at your Y column and you're going to look for the zeros in the Y column. That's why they're called zeros. So here's my first zero. 
you're going to look at the matching x value. It's a negative 2, so that's where this solution or this 0 came from. Okay, here's another 0 in the y column, so I'm going to look at the corresponding x. It's a negative 1, so that's where this 0 came from. And there's another 0 in the y column. I'm going to look at the corresponding x, which is a 1, and that's where this 0 came from. So just another way to look for those zeros. So let's actually practice one. I'm going to have you guys pause the video and try these questions. So we have an equation here and a graph here. And the questions are, how do you know this is a cubic function? What is the y-intercept? And what are the zeros? OK, hopefully your eyes went to the equation and went to this exponent on the x, which is a 3. And that's how you know it's a cubic function. The greatest exponent on the x is a 3. Usually, that term with the 3 is that first term if your polynomial is in standard form. Remember, it's called that leading term. And what is the y-intercept of the function? Hopefully, your eyes went here. The graph crosses at 0, 8, so the y-intercept is at y equals 8. What are the zeros of the function? Hopefully your eyes went to these three points here. So there are three zeros. They're at negative 2, at 1, and at 4. So we say x equals negative 2, x equals 1, and x equals 4. You could also write those in set notation with your braces. OK, here's a second example we're going to look at. What are the zeros of the function f of x equals x to the third power minus 3x squared minus 10x? I don't see a graph. Hmm, I wonder where I'm going to get my x-intercepts from. Here's a hint. Go to desmos.com and look at the graph. I'll give you a second to pause this video and find the zeros on the graph. Okay, hopefully you are... Going here, you're going to x this out. Type y equals x to the third power. Use the arrow key to move out of the exponent, and then minus 3x squared minus 10x. Okay, and you can get your zero straight from your graph. Okay, if you hover your mouse over the point, it should give you the, uh, the value right here. Negative 2, 0, 0, 0, and 5, 0. If you wanted to get them from the table, you could. But I think it's just easier to take them straight from the graph. Okay, here's a picture of that graph again. Again, the zeros are at negative 2, right here, 0, and 5. This is what it would look like in set notation. That's it. OK. Um, here's a challenge for some of you if you would like to learn how to do this algebraically. Okay, I have the same function that I had on the slide before, but we could actually find the zeros without the use of the graph. Okay, so think back, I want you to think back to your quadratic unit and how we solved algebraically. We learned how to factor and we use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula can only be used for a quadratic equation. So what we want to do, this is not a quadratic, it's a cubic. We want to be able to factor it. Okay, so first thing we want to do is set the equation equal to 0. Instead of f of x, I'm going to set the equation equal to 0. So I replaced this with this. Okay, so first thing you want to do when you factor is look for GCF. So do you see anything in common, any common factors with these three terms? Hopefully you notice that they all have an x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide each term by x. Okay, the x goes on the outside of the parentheses, and then whatever I get when I divide would go on the inside. Hopefully you got this, right? x to the third divided by x is x squared. Minus 3x squared divided by x is minus 3x. And minus 10x divided by x is minus 10. And next I want to look at this trinomial and see if I can factor again. This is where you go into that double bubble. It's going to be x plus or minus something and then x plus or minus something. Or think facts b. You want factors of negative 10, so factors of a times c, with the sum of b, so with the sum of negative 3. And those two magic numbers are negative 5 and 2. So your two factors are going to become x minus 5 and x plus 2. 
and don't forget to bring your GCF down. Okay, from here, I'm going to set each of my factors equal to zero. So I set x equals to zero, I set x minus five equal to zero, and x plus two equal to zero. So it should look like this. And then lastly, you would solve each equation. This one's already solved, so you know one of the answers is zero. To solve this one, I would have to add five to both sides, so x equals five. And then to solve this one, I would subtract two from both sides, so x equals negative two. Okay, so your three solutions or zeros or roots are zero, five, and negative two. Notice those are the same three numbers we had on the slide before because it's the same equation. This is just how you would do it algebraically.